Fight M. It may contain coarse language, sexual references and adult themes. Tonightly, I am government comedian Tom Ballard. Tonight, performing live on the show, rising star Jack River will be here, everyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And don't forget, tomorrow night on the show, we're going to be joined by former Australian treasurer Wayne Swanee Swan, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> First up tonight, Greens leader Richard Di Natale, seen here pushing out a greenhouse gas, <laughs> was at the National Press Club today to make an important announcement. But we also need the government to intervene in other areas, like the provision of essential services. Banking is a prime example. That's why today the Greens are announcing our plan for a publicly owned bank. Yes, we're going to get a nationalised, publicly owned bank once the Greens are in power. In other news, we're never getting a nationalised bank. <laughs> That's how it works. The purpose of the bank would be to offer cheaper mortgages to help with the housing affordability crisis. That's good. That's good news. Except that the loans are capped at $500,000, which means in Sydney I'll be able to afford this beautiful photo of a house. <laughs> Fair play. It's a good idea. It's a bold idea from the Greens there, which is very good. And I'm sure they've thought long and hard about how to make the name of this idea, you know, not sound too communisty. A people's bank. The people's bank. The people's bank. A people's bank. Yes, the people's <laughs> bank! Good thinking, Greens. Here are some slogans for the people's bank. Uh, now's the time to switch. That's a good one. <laughs> you can with Commie Bank. <laughs> or invest your shavings with us. Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. I had some more ideas, but the graphics team said they wanted to go home. So. <laughs> it was a pretty important speech for the Greens there, lots of big announcements, and the ABC News, they treated it with the respect it deserved. So much so, that during Di Natale's speech, they showed rolling footage of the royal visit <laughs> in the bottom corner <laughs> at the same time. Now, Richard Di Natale is an avowed Republican. That is some sweet trolling from ABC <laughs> News. That would be like me doing my monologue and just having a little video of the Bolt Report come up up here. <laughs> hey, Andrew. And then it started small, but then 30 minutes into his speech, the royal arrival went from being a small swear in the corner to pretty much nudging him off the entire <laughs> screen. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Dean Natale. Stop talking about wealth inequality. Let me see the unelected millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> Some people do not like Dean Natale's ideas at all, like Senator Erica Betts, seen here laughing even before he had his finger pulled. <laughs> Two fart jokes already. You're welcome. <laughs> I bet said that Natalie's speech was so crazy, Australians watching it could be forgiven for thinking they'd mistakenly tuned into ABC comedy. <laughs> okay, now, first of all, people mistakenly tuning into ABC comedy is how we get half of our viewers, all right? So that's good. <laughs> and I, I, you got to agree with Eric here, you know? You don't understand, Richard D. Natalie's speech was comedy gold. Would you have the case for a levy on the big banks to compensate for their implicit banking guarantee? <laughs> Good stuff. Richard Di Natale, everybody. He's good. We should, we should get him writing for our show. <laughs> Speaking of TV, you guys heard of Gogglebox? Yeah. <laughs> good. You love Wayne Swan and Gogglebox. That's what I know about you people. Gogglebox is a TV show where real people are filmed on their couches watching a variety of different TV shows, which then becomes a TV show for us to watch at home on our couches. It's a TV to ducken. <laughs> and it's a very popular show. <laughs> People love hearing the cast opinions on everything from television to politics. Last night, the shows Anastasia and Faye went on Paul Murray Live on Sky News to talk politics and give a hot take on our hot PM. So I want you to give it to me straight, oh, Anastasia. God. What do you think of Malcolm yeah. Turnbull? Look, I think he's hot. He's the hottest <laughs> prime minister oh. we've had, right? <laughs> the hottest prime minister we've ever had. These are the opinions that need to be aired. <laughs> We need to get out of our lefty, liberal, latte-sitting bubbles and find out what real Australians think about the fuckability of our Prime Minister. <laughs> yes! She's clearly wrong, by the way. It's definitely Andrew Fisher. Look at that guy. Look at that moustache. Ooh, nummy nummy. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, you guys prefer Wayne Swan, I guess. <laughs> 
But all this made me wonder, you know, when is Tonightly going to get on Gogglebox? I want to find out what real people think of me. I want to hear compliments and see them laughing at my joke. OK, and being told that we were on Gogglebox here at Tonightly, we have the footage. This is exciting. Let's take a look. Tonightly, thank you for joining us. I feel like we're about to watch the gay underbelly. <laughs> Ooh, Ma! Do they drug test these people before the show? Tonight we bring you stand-up comedy from French bon viveur, Marcel Lucan. Five minutes and all I've heard is introductions and bullshit. <laughs> I want a gangbang, not a bang-bang. Come on! <laughs> Australia is allowing this absolute wank stain so much airtime and I'm addicted to it. <laughs> oh, thank God it's over. It's so painful, this show. <laughs> it's always good to get feedback. <laughs> Someone pointed out that, like, in three of those clips, I'm wearing this exact same shirt. <laughs> ABC, baby. <laughs> Here's some good news, of course. Everyone's talking about the Commonwealth Games. They've begun tonight! <laughs> yes! <laughs> the wait is over. I feel so happy. What about you, Carl Stefanovic? Are you excited? This magnificent morning here on the Gold Coast. One of those mornings you wake up and you see the sunshine and you just go, I'm glad to be alive. <laughs> you said it, Carl. Everyone's getting in the spirit. Or as one Gold Coast business owner said, I think a lot of people will be happy when it's over. <laughs> Woo! Pubs, baby! Slight hiccup right off the bat for the Com Games with the official program stating that the country of England is in the region of Africa. <laughs> That's ridiculous, obviously. You can't just all of a sudden say that this part of the world belongs to this part of the world. Right, England? <laughs> that would be ridiculous. <laughs> See, it's, it's funny, but you think about it too. It's funny, but you're thinking too. <laughs> um. The opening ceremony is actually... Government comedian. The opening ceremony <laughs> is actually taking place... It's on right now, right? As this show airs, let's cross to it now. <laughs> OK. We don't have the rights to show any footage for the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> we do find that clip very amusing. <laughs> One thing that sullied my Commonwealth Games experience is the news that Queensland Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk, seen here at a local dog fighting ring, <laughs> <laughs> won't be allowed to give a speech at tonight's event. The Commonwealth Games Federation has made the decision that they don't want politicians at the opening ceremony speaking. Thankfully, and this is true, Pre Premier Palaszczuk has released the speech that she would have given if she had the chance to speak, and it really packs a punch, I tell you. She states, Queenslanders put the queue in Qantas, the bend in bananas, and the warmth into every sip of Bundaberg rum. <laughs> yeah, it puts the queue in Qantas, the bend in bananas, the marijuana in boogie boards. <laughs> the fuck off in fuck off we're full. Go, Queensland! <laughs> Prima Palaszczuk continued, from where we are right now, the girl and guy next door are literally Chris Hemsworth and Margot Robbie. We've got millions just like them. OK, I don't know about Margot Robbie. There does appear to be three million Hemsworths. There's, there's quite a few of those. They're everywhere, I think. And there was more. She said, to us, the Gold Coast is the smell of pink zinc and tent canvas, coconut oil and vinyl car seats. Ah, yes, the best-selling point of the Gold Coast, the smell. Mmm, <laughs> Lynx deodorant and bikey speed. I can smell it now. The stale vomit of a schoolie mixed with just a hint of fake tan on a meter maid. Mmm, I feel like I'm there. <laughs> Obviously, the eyes of the world are going to be on uh, the Gold Coast during the games. And I'll tell you who loves the GC. Bloody loves the GC is Queensland boy and tonight the reporter, Greg Larson. Nothing shows off your city to the world quite like a big international sporting event. The 2010 FIFA World Cup introduced the world to the beautiful music of South Africa. <laughs> The 2012 Olympics introduced London to the world, and apart from the fact that the logo looked like Lisa Simpson giving oral sex to Bart Simpson, <laughs> the games went off without a hitch. And who could forget the last Commonwealth Games, hosted by... Uh, whoever it was that hosted them. I don't know, I didn't watch. Nobody did. These sporting events are basically one big tourism campaign for the city that hosts them. 
So today I'd like to take you to some Gold Coast destinations that you won't find in any guidebooks. We're here at a shopping centre in the middle of Surface Paradise and we're about to go in there and shoot some guns. There is nothing that is more Gold Coast than that. Well, I think I got a few bloody bullseyes there. Can I cut that, actually? No, just turn that off. You know, that was probably someone else's. Oh! Fuck yeah! <laughs> that felt good to shoot. Oh, I had a really good time. I'm just going to go pop off to the hospital. Oh! Gold Coast. We are going to the Gold Coast sign. It's a brand new sign that costs three million dollars. This is gonna be a fucking dream come true. I'm so excited. Can you see it? The Gold Gold Coast. You couldn't even see it. You couldn't even fucking it just look like lights from that angle. What are, now we're fucking on the M1. We gotta go to Brisbane? What? How do we get off? We gotta get off. Now I'm fucking lost. No, we're not going home until we get a proper fucking look at the Gold Coast sign. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Now shut your traps. We're now in like some fucking field. I don't know where the fuck we are, but we finally got a shot of the Gold Coast sign and it almost looks like it says Gold Coast too. It looks like from here it says Good Coast, but that's good enough. Oh, I don't regret this at all. Get a shot of that. Once we escaped the bush and got back to the city, we had time to visit my favourite Gold Coast attraction. We're here at Infinity. I can't even describe what Infinity is. All I can tell you is there's two kinds of people who go in. Young families with kids and teenagers who have just dropped acid. And I fall into the latter category. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not a teenager at all. <laughs> to get inside. Ah, where am I? We're actually our way. Oh, fuck no. It's magic. It's magic. It's magic. I understand now. We are all part of one consciousness. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Well, I've had a great time. You know, some people might tell you the Gold Coast is tacky, but what I've found is that it's fun, family friendly, and most importantly, full of adventure. I know you're scared. I'm scared too. I don't know what's going to happen. So bring on the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> All right, are we done? Yeah, because I want to. I want to. I want to get the fuck out of here. I hate this fucking city. Thank you, Greg. Time now to talk about Instagram. Last year, Britain's Royal Society for Public Health rated Instagram the number one worst social media network for mental health and well-being. Congratulations, Instagram. Good stuff, Insta. Don't worry, Facebook. You'll get there next year. <laughs> Today, Instagram has responded by announcing the creation of their well-being team, whose entire focus is to make Instagram a safer place where people feel good. Here to explain more about the decision is well-being team leader and Instagram influencer Greta Lee Jackson. Well, hi there, at Tom C. Ballard. Hashtag tonightly, hashtag clean eating. <laughs> You just call me Tom, it's fine. So Instagram, you know, has now been associated with depression, anxiety, negative images about, uh, you know, people's bodies and stuff. This is not a good look. Well, Tom, here at Instagram, we believe that anything's a good look with the right filter. Oh, and our God. wellbeing program deals with depression and anxiety in, an, in a safe way by making it look hot AF on Insta. <laughs> what? Surely the best way to deal with mental health problems that are attributed to Instagram is by people deleting Instagram. No! Whoa! Oh, no. <laughs> No, uh, we, don't, we don't want you to stop using the gram. Obviously, that would be totes cray cray. <laughs> <laughs> what we want you to do is instead of only posting pictures of the best moments, post pictures of the worst moments, but make them look the best. <laughs> Hashtag depressed to impress. <laughs> depressed to impress? <laughs> what 
That's awful. That sounds like you're exploiting people's poor mental health. Uh, don't be a hater. I do it all the time. You don't look very sad. Oh, I'm horribly depressed. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I've been wearing the same hashtag outfit of the day for the past week. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> What's that? What's going on? What just happened? This just happened. Oh, my God! <laughs> See, quick. that's called an angstagram, and it's part of our new wellbeing initiative. <laughs> now, we've also created a bunch of new hashtags you can use to really get your sadness trending, like hashtag panic attack Wednesday, oh. hashtag sad babes of Instagram, <laughs> and my favourite, hashtag follow for a wallow. A wallow? Like wallowing in your depression? Yes, Queen, oh. now you get it. Hashtag trend it all before you end it all. What? That's a terrible hashtag. <laughs> now, Tom, let me show you how to get your angst insta-worthy. I don't want to know. Uh, well, sometimes, Tom, we have to push on, even though we don't want to, because people are following us and they have expectations. Oh, God, OK, all right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God, so random. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a picture of someone with a boyfriend holding hands with them, which would normally make me pretty jealous, but not anymore, because here's my reality, and it's just as Insta-worthy, holding <laughs> hands on my remote. See, your gram can be lit AF while you're feeling shit AF at the same time. <laughs> AKA simultaneous. Stop making that annoying sound. No, Queen. OK, listen, here's one for you, Tom. So you like coffee and have a laptop, right? Yes, yes. So I bet you wish that your workspace looked as productive and glamorous as this person's Insta, right? No, that looks very artificial to me. Well, Tom, you can't spell artificial without art. And I took the liberty of to rearrange the horrible reality of your pathetic desk into a stylish flat lay. What? <laughs> Did you get those out of the bin? Uh, no, we're just sitting on your desk. It reminds me about the way I live. Hashtag PTSD Flashback Friday. Oh, Stop doing hashtags, Greta. I can't get on board with this, OK? You can't just put a nice, pretty filter on something and say that you're fixing the problem. Well, Tom, you literally do jokes about the news. Hashtag defund the ABC. Why do we have that hashtag there? <laughs> Greta Lee Jackson, everybody. <laughs> Moving on now, the Commonwealth Games means athletes and sports and stuff, but it also means that the Royals are in town! <laughs> I hate you people. <laughs> This marks Prince Charles' 16th trip to Australia and people are excited, particularly young Brisbaneites Bruno and Lulu Hickey, who braved the rain today in order to meet the visiting royals. Bruno said he was very interested in the history of the royal family and told the ABC, Queen Elizabeth has been the reigning monarch for more than 40 years now, so it'll be interesting to see how long Charles reigns for, maybe three to four years? <laughs> what do you mean by that, Bruno? What are you going to do to Prince Charles, Bruno? Bruno! Bruno! Of course, the debate around the role that the British royal family should play in our system of government continues to chug along. Just this week, former Prime Minister Paul Keating told the British press he's certain that Prince Charles would support Australia becoming a republic. Oh yeah, Paul? I'm pretty certain Prince Charles would also support you not touching his mum all the time. <laughs> God, Paul, stop her! It's my mum! <laughs> Fuck, it's not funny! <laughs> To explore the monarchy republic issue further, I sat down with the executive director of Australians for a Constitutional Monarchy, Jai Martinkovic, and the chair of the Australian Republic movement, Peter Fitzsimons, for another instalment of Australians Divided. Hello, Peter Fitzsimons. Hello, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Jai Martinkovic, hello. How are you doing? Let's talk about the bandana. Um... Do we have to? <laughs> yep. I put it on in 2007. My son, my son gave it to me, put it on. I thought, geez, that looks all right. And he said, Dad, that looks great. But I'm over 50 and I don't give a flying fuck that you don't like it. There we go. Can you take it off, please? <laughs> no. <laughs> you have to be bigger than you are. <laughs> Why are you a monarchist? Well, I I'd go further and say that I'm a constitutional monarchist. So a monarchist is, I think, someone who sort of gets all excited about uh, the royals themselves and all the events and what have you. And, I mean, I, I take an interest in those things to some extent, but to me, primarily, it's about our constitutional system, and I think the royals come part and parcel with that. 
Okay, so you don't get into the royal wedding. <laughs> oh, look, I think everybody likes to see it. and No, kind of... they don't. <laughs> oh, look, I, I think they do, you know, to some extent. No, they don't. <laughs> Why do you hate the Queen so much? I don't hate her at all. I think she'd be a fascinating woman. If you could just get through all the protocols, she'd be, she'd be a good dinner companion, wouldn't she? We want... <laughs> Tell it to her. <laughs> Carry on. No, we don't want to get rid of her. We just don't want her to be at the head. <laughs> mm, one of the great anthems, isn't it? You're a terrible Republican. Why do you hate Peter Fitzsimons? <laughs> I don't hate Peter Fitzsimons. In fact, I quite like him. <laughs> Tell it I... to him. Tell it to him why we shouldn't be a, constitu a, a republic. There's this whole idea that, you know, Australia is somehow not independent. And I think that if you tell most Australians that Australia is not independent, they'd tell you where to go. Why should Australia become a republic? Do you really need an answer? Yep. It's ludicrous. OK. Abs no, I haven't finished. All right. <laughs> what our constitution says we are is Great Britain in the South Seas. We're no longer... We used to be Great Britain in the South Seas, as our flag looks like. You know, I love that line from Jerry Seinfeld when he said, I love your flag, Great Britain at night. And that is who we used to be. It is, is that not... that Jerry Seinfeld? That is Jerry Seinfeld. And... That's a very bad impression. <laughs> I love your flag. It's Great Britain at night. Did you hear him say it or did I hear him say it? Oh, no, I'm just saying I've got a better Jerry Seinfeld yeah, look, impression than you. When I went to Jerry Seinfeld impressions, I'll ask for them. Have you met Her Majesty? I have very briefly. Oh, what happened? Well, uh, it was at a... Don't spare a single detail. I greeted her, but um, there was no <laughs> discussion. What do you do? Do you bow? Are you allowed to touch your hands? What, what are the rules? You, um, of course, you meet the Queen. Um, she's presented to you, and uh, I'm trying to recall... Um, she, she, was brought, she was brought through, and, um, <laughs> yes, I, I, I bowed to her, actually. Yeah, that, that was the way that played out. How long after she carks it do we go, all right, let's wrap this up? Well... <laughs> I don't think that's probably the way to put it, but... Uh... <laughs> Why? She carks. She'll cark like everybody else. I'm gonna cark, you're gonna cark, the Queen will cark. She will pass away. <laughs> <laughs> Is Australia becoming a republic more important than climate change? Hmm, that's an interesting question. In the, in the long scheme of things, climate change is obviously far more important. Income inequality? No, look, we can go through a dozen policies. Let's not... Homelessness? Let's go. Let's not. Terrorism? Barnaby Joyce's love child. Do you believe that the royal family has been designated by God with a divine right to rule? I think that the royal family has a very healthy respect for God in the way that they operate. And I think that... that <laughs> well, you would. Direct, well, I mean, that, you that would. That directs, I if think, you're like, the way wow, that they operate. I'm born into this palace and i got some sweet jewels and stuff. And it's all back to the big man upstairs. Peace, son. <laughs> There are two ways that we can do this. We can get this done in two or three years' time. Are you talking about killing the Queen? No, about having a referendum. We can do this in two or three years, while the Queen is still young enough to come to Australia and stand on the steps of the Opera House to hand us the keys. And we give her a thunderous standing ovation. And we say, thank you, Your Majesty, for the sterling service you have rendered our nation. Isn't it finer and more mature to look mum in the eye and say, we're, we're leaving home, mum. Or do we wait till the funeral and slip out the back? Come on. I think you're being told the Queen just died while you were giving that answer. <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. So you don't think there's anything wrong at all with the fact that a head of state is an Australian citizen? Well, I don't agree with the premise. Uh, I think that we have already in Australia an Australian who is a head of state. So when, when Republicans turn around and say, we need an Australian for head of state, there is no question that the Governor-General is our Head of State. So what is the Queen? The Queen is our Sovereign. So then what's, what's the Sovereign? Uh, well, the Sovereign is the person, the personification of the Crown. So the functions that the Crown has in our constitutional system has a figurehead at the top of it. Just seems like doubling up a bit, fair bit there. Well, unless you're going to have an Australian King or Queen, which is a different question. That would question. be cool! <laughs> Fuck! Yes! <laughs> That's solved! Look, Just get an Australian <laughs> king or queen. Now, how would you decide who that is? That's the question. Ida Butros. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> we've got it. We solved it, everyone. Mm. This is the first time we've solved anything on this show. <laughs> this is great. I think it's too late for it, to be honest with you. If we had have done it 100 years ago, it might have worked. I think Ida was around then, so that's... Um, <laughs> that would be fine. Are there any monarchists watching this? What would you say to them? Down that barrel. Down that barrel, what I want to say, there won't be many monarchs. This is ABC, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, well, there's not going to be many monarchs, seriously. Are there? You know that, and I know that. Not many people. What I want to say, camera one on me, okay? Can you zoom it in tight? 
Don't waste this Don't first. direct the fucking shot, OK? We got it. I'd say to Peter Fitzsimons and the Republican movement that I'd be the first to join your ranks if you were able to demonstrate to me a system of government, the detail of a system of government that was better than our current system. But the problem is that you can't produce anything, but yet you're prepared to undermine our existing system in the meantime. Oh! <laughs> safe. And fuck you. you. Give it a little bit of, like, a <laughs> little bit of sauce as well. <laughs> I'll leave it at that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is this. Your goodwill is not enough. We need you to get involved. Google Australian Republic Movement, become a member, become a volunteer. Let's get this party started. <laughs> Led by you. Great. <laughs> Take it off! Ow. Take it off! What? It looks <laughs> Take it off! <laughs> Tonight has been selling out shows across Australia. Her debut album is called Sugar Mountain. She's here to perform the single Ballroom. Would you please welcome Jack River? Give it up.